there is something you should never forget. No matter the height you have climbed in life, God can bring you down. That is what makes him God. You can raise yourself, he will bring you down. Works. Works. Hallelujah. There is a scripture that is normally, is a scripture that is normally read during funerals. Anytime I hear that scripture, then I'm in the funeral. But I don't want to read that scripture at your funeral. I want to read it whilst you are alive. Say amen. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14. And I'm reading from verse 13. It says, Revelation 14, 30, it said, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth ye say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Say amen. I want to read it again. And I heard a voice from heaven say unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead we die in the Lord. From henceforth ye see the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. And as they are rested from their labors, then their works do follow them. Say amen. Let me read another one from Revelation 20. These are all funeral scriptures. Revelation 20, reading from verse 11 down. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open. Everybody say, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and the hell delivered up the dead that were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. Say amen. So these two scriptures, like I said, are normally read during funerals. But I don't want to come to your funeral to read these scriptures to you. Because I want to read it to you whilst you are alive so that you will look at your works. Say works. Which means that one of the most, after being saved, one of the most important thing that you must look out for is your work in the kingdom of God. Your works in the church. Your works in the ministry. And I want to give you seven things that don't constitute works. I want to give you seven things that don't constitute works. Say amen. Being close to the pastor is not works. If you are close to me, I love it. I love people to be close to me, but it's not works. Sitting at the same place in church every Sunday is not works. If you have a particular seat that you sit every Sunday, it's not works. So in case you see that, oh, as for me, this is my original seat. This is where I sit every Sunday. You will not be rewarded for sitting at the same place every Sunday. It's not constitute works. Joining a keep fit club in the church is not works. Joining a keep fit club in the church and doing exercise is, 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 is not works. It is works for your own body. Say amen. <laughs> Sweeping the streets and draining gutters is not God's work. That is the work of AMA, Zoom Lion, and other people. And if, if we find ourselves doing it, we are doing it for our own environment and whatever, we will not, they will not open a book and then read in the book that for sweeping the streets and draining gutters, you are being rewarded. 
No, there's no reward in heaven for sweep. We should sweep the streets, yes. We should drain the gutters for our own healthy environment, but it's not the work of God. Say amen. amen. Going for a walk. <laughs> like health walk or whatever, then we all gather with our t-shirt and cap. It's good for our own benefit, but it's not the work of God. The last one, you'll not be happy with it. Visiting the pastor on Christmas day and eating jollof rice is not the work of God. Visiting the pastor on Christmas day and eating corned beef jollof is not the work of God. <laughs> this one, the number seven, is some way. Singing and jumping and sweating in church is not the work of God. Singing, jumping, sweating is nice. We are praising and thanking God for who he is and for what he has done. But it is not the work of God. If you don't clap, it's okay. Because I don't want you to die before I say what is the work of God, what is not the work of God. There will be no, there will be no, there's no scripture that says that. And you shall be rewarded for jumping, dancing. All those things, we are doing it in praise of God, in worship of God, for who he is and for what he has done. But God's work is different. You can jump all your life in church and when they open the books, they will not find your works. That's what I want to tell you. I, I'm not afraid of you at all. I'm just trying to, to just let you know. Say amen. People think that they will receive a reward for being close to the pastor. No. Being close to the pastor is good. But it's not the work of God. Let me show you one or two simple works of God. Say amen. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. Matthew 9, verse 35. Let me show you the work of God. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. Say amen. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were, and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Say amen. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Hallelujah. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest. That he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Say amen. And when he had called the twelve. He gave them power against unclean spirits. To cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness. And all manner of what? Diseases. Hallelujah. So you see, preaching, witnessing, ministering, healing the sick, showing compassion to those who are less fortunate, those who are stricken by misfortune, living uh, in certain conditions and trying to alleviate their suffering is the work of God. So if you don't find yourself doing some of these things, then you're not doing God's work. Witnessing, preaching, teaching, visiting sick people, visiting the poor, helping, getting involved in alleviating the sufferings of other people is the work of God. Sitting at the same place every Sunday is not the work of God. Jumping is not the work of God. Keep feet club is not the work of God. 
visiting pastors. It's not the work of God. Eating jollof in pastor's house. It's not the work of God. Having a health work is not the work of God. Walking and sweating whilst walking is not the work of God. It is for your own benefit. But witnessing to somebody, preaching to somebody, helping somebody who is stricken by misfortune, healing the sick, casting that devil, doing, joining ministries, intercessory ministry, uh, all kinds of departments, and working there is the work of God. So those who have abandoned their ministry, I want to tell you something, you have abandoned God's work. If God is leading you to join a department and you, you at the point, you find it boring, you find it too whatever, whatever, and too whatever, and you backslide from it, it means you are backsliding from God's work. Say amen. If you join a department in the church or pastor appoints you to do something for him in the kingdom, See it as God's work from which the books will be opened and you shall be judged in it. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. For say the Spirit, they have rest from their labors. What kind of labor? Their labor of going, coming for rehearsal, going and coming from all these things for their works. What works? What you did for God will follow you. What you did for God. Not what you did for Reverend Steve Mesa. Not what you did for CM, but what you did for God. Some of the things that you did for God, they are not known here. They are not in this house. They are in your private activities. They are not recorded here. We don't, we don't record God's work in this house. Your own personal witnessing life, ministry life, teaching, preaching, holding fellowship, laying hands on sick people, trying to do God's work in a way that you can. Because many people go to school of ministry when they finish, what department will you join? I want to be an intercessor. I want to be a chorister. I want to be a counselor. And then after some time, when you go and look for them at the department, they are not there. You have left God's work. Today, I'm not your friend. It's okay. Say amen. amen. Tell somebody, works. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 8 verse 1. Look at it. Luke 8 verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout, this, this is Jesus, throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Say amen. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, look at it, and Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. Of their substance, they ministered unto Jesus. That's the work of God. Jesus preaching, and after preaching, he feeds, he feeds the people who are hungry. He gives them food to eat. Which means feeding hungry people is God's work. One day somebody said, and when you give a plate of rice to poor people, then what? Then I said to him, then it is recorded in eternity. Then because Jesus fed hungry people and after 2,000 years, it is still recorded in the Bible forever. That single meal they ate, didn't they go to the toilet? It was flushed out after eating it. But the act has been recorded for life. So giving a plate of hot jollof rice to a poor child is works that shall be recorded for eternity. Don't, don't, don't fool yourself. There may be so many things you will be doing and you are thinking that you are doing God's work. You will not be doing God's work. You are thinking it is God's work. It's not, it's not God's work. 
But giving loaves of bread, giving help to a child, giving, giving mattress to a child lying on the cardboard, changing his sleeping place is the work of God. And if you are not able to save nine testers to help a child, you have failed God's work. You have failed. Not only have you failed, you have failed at all. No, and so that is why the Lord is telling me that I should preach on what is works. Matthew 25, verse 31. Let me, let me, let me remind you what is God's work. And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father. Come ye, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was a hungered, he gave me meat. When I was thirsty, he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in. Say amen. Naked and he clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison and he came to me. Beloved, these lists are the works of God. I am reminding the church one more time. Do you see keep fit in it? Do you see gym in it? Do you see dressing in it? Do you see your Gucci in it? It is feeding hungry people. And people, there are hungry people. When I was in Kumasi with Elisha, and I saw, I saw people about this size room four who have come from everywhere to volunteer. And I will say that if I didn't get that number, the number that is going with me from, 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 from here was less than, it's about 150. 150, my church, with all their cars, is 150. So these people were the ones who made up the numbers. Meanwhile, if it is a friend's funeral, in Kumasi, you see black, black. We are going for a funeral. Going to a funeral is not God's work. Going to a funeral and going and, and be in the funeral, and after the funeral, then you have something to eat and travel so many hours. It's not, it's not God's work. Because whether you go or not, the dead will be buried. Jesus himself said, Let the dead people eh, bury their dead. But you, Go ahead and go and preach the gospel. So going to Kumasi to meet over 20,000 disabled people, preaching the gospel, showing them the love of God, giving them food and say, Jesus loves you and Jesus cares about you. Even though you are in this state, I want you to know that God still loves you. It's the work of God. That one, you are not eager to go. Only a few people came and registered. A few. So God himself went and moved some people in Kumasi. And they came in. And when it was Independence Square, it is close to my house. It will be very easy for me to go. Independence Square, you were able to go. Now they are testing you with God's way. You couldn't go. It's a test. But you failed. It means that you want to do God's work at your own convenience. When it suits you, when it is easy, but God's way, missionaries who came here in the 16th, 17th century, Jude Hammer, they came here and worked here and lived here and died here. Missionaries. That is God's way. That is why you will enter heaven, okay. But where you will sleep in heaven? After the heaven here, you are going because you are born again. Your name is already written in the book of But where you will sleep in heaven? You will sleep in some area B <laughs> in heaven 
You cannot be, you cannot be with Brother Paul on the same line. Missionaries who came here, you cannot be, you cannot be on the Hallelujah Street number one. There is an Hallelujah Street. Only those who have paid the price, not those who conveniently came to God's soil. No, you shall not be rewarded for that. God's work is sacrificial. It takes a toll on you. You sacrifice your time, your energy, your money. Before we could be bought out of the slave market of sin, it cost Jesus his life so we can be born again. What has it cost you? Say, I hear you, Pastor. John 14, 12 to 14. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works, say the works, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Greater works. So, so Jesus is expecting greater works. Not to be reducing it. And don't tell me, I have been supporting this uh, Christ or what? Is that Christ or what? Or whatever, the, whatever it is. I have been supporting it for you. <laughs> you are supporting Christ in the world for life. For the rest of your life, you must support Christ in the world. Because the poor, Jesus said, you shall always have with you. So you, can, you cannot say that. Eh, balance here, I gave mattress. So if I don't give this here, what is wrong with it? There's everything wrong with it. Give again. When we launch it, 1,000, 1,000. Those of you came for 1,000 and you haven't returned the 1,000. I'm on you. Bring the 1,000. And still buy the mattress. And still support. And still travel if you can. If you can't travel, come to the decks. I want to sponsor 10 people to come and say this is 1,000 Ghana cities. I would have loved to go, but my children are small, and my husband too. She's not that young. So I want to sponsor ten people. That is the work of God. Greater works. So let's not say that. But I have been supporting all this time. Jesus, he couldn't finish healing the sick before he died. Jesus, he couldn't finish feeding the hungry. That is why he left it for another. That is why the Bible says, "Ye shall receive power." When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me from Jerusalem, Judea, and unto the utmost part of the world. This day of help is going to the 16 regions of Ghana. So, if Bojo Bojo has come inside, you revive yourself. I say, if you are Bojo, a revive. Are you working like this? You, where, you, where you are? Get up. Close your eyes. Right, stand there. Come to me. Close your eyes and come to me. You are lost. <laughs> Try and be blind. How many minutes was he blind? Huh? He was lost. So to, to, come to, come, come to me. Come to me. Was it difficult for you to come? Because you can walk, you can see, you can hear. Somebody can hear, can see, and can walk. There are people like that. They can't, they can't hear, they can't see, they can't walk. Give him a plate of rice. And a, a, a place for him to lie down to. You don't, you don't want to do it. This guy was blind for two seconds. He missed his way. A, a car would have blocked him. My people, it is not time to slow down. It is not time to be tired. Because there are still needs. So that those of you, the Bible said, let the strong, please sit down, please sit down, thank you very much. Let the strong 
bear the infirmities of the weak. We are strong. We can see. We can walk. We were jumping and praising God a few minutes ago. That shows the blessings of God. Some people can jump. He can't even hear the song you are singing. He can't see the screen to even follow the, 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 the whatever. He can't see the screen. He's like, when, when I was in Kumasi, a group of disabled people were there. And we wanted to say thank you for we coming to Kumasi. But they, they couldn't say it. So somewhere, signing. Somewhere. That's all he said. So he said, God bless you. God bless you. Stand me. Some of them were blind. They came and said, They let him. Reverend, they shake my hand, Reverend, for thinking about us. Shake my hand. It's blind. They all, all the disabled people who were in the meeting came differently to express their gratitude. Because we were standing on our feet for hours. And, and they were surprised that I had flown from Accra, spent the night, and I'm standing on my feet for hours, training the people as to what they must do on the day of help. For them who cannot help themselves. To me, that is the highest form of God's work. It's the highest form of God's work. It's better than football, volleyball, keep fit. All this dressing, this is why it's more important. So, if you are not a part of that which is important, then what are you part of? Then what are you part of? A club in your office, a gay club, a lesbian club, a drinking club. Some of the clubs you belong to, they are gay clubs, they are lesbian clubs, they are beer and appetite clubs. Come out of those clubs. Come out of those secret organizations who don't know what you are doing. An organization that a, a, a room that has no window. The room has no window. And you belong to it. And some of you know what I'm talking about. The Bible says that is darkness. And you are light. The two cannot marry. I want everybody to rise up in this church for you to know that even though we have been doing this work for years, there is more to be done. So nobody is slowing down here. Nobody is slowing down. <laughs> First Corinthians 3, 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how he built it thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. Of what sort it is. The heart with which you did it. The mind with which you did it. The zeal with which you did it. It shall be tried. Whether in this church or somebody else's church. Because as for where you belong, it doesn't matter. It's God's work. Whether you are doing the work here or you are doing it in Presby or you are in Catholic, whatever you are, your work shall be tried. Once you are a Christian, your work shall go through. The Bible said that. Look at the next verse. He said, He said, if any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive what? A reward. So everybody here under the sound of my voice shall be rewarded according to his work. They will not give your reward to me to give to you. Shall be given to you. I will receive mine. And you too will receive yours. Look at the next verse. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. So some people will suffer loss, but you'll be saved. But your works is zero. No reward. Oh, you keep fit, jumping, sweaty. You didn't have any reward. So I'm telling you now. So that you receive 
the right kind of reward. May the Lord bless the efforts of your work. May the Lord bless all the giving you have given before. And may he continue to bless you as you continue to give. We, have, we haven't even begun yet. More responsibilities for us. And he who has begun the good work, may he perfect it. I love you all.